Today is pretty darn hot. In fact, it's the hottest day of the year so far. But do you know what else is pretty hot? The all new eighth generation Vauxhall Astra. And this is the first Vauxhall Astra to be designed by the Stellantis Group. And it has some pretty handsome brothers as well. You've got the Peugeot 308 and also the DS4, both of which I've reviewed recently. So if you haven't already seen them, then please go and check them out. But does the Vauxhall Astra have what it takes to take on those fantastic vehicles? Does it live up to its brother's footsteps? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's video. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and content like this, then please make sure you subscribe to Auto Social UK. So let's chat about design, because the previous generations of Astra were not really known for being particularly striking. The same can't be said for the eighth generation. It really is very smart. It's much boxier. You've got sharper edges. You've got the line that runs all the way down the center of the bonnet. It really does look quite good, especially finished in this electric yellow. But it might not be for everyone. And I know that because I think Rory Reid described it as being radioactive vomit, which is not a particularly nice image to have, is it? And then there's this color. I mean, what were they thinking? It looks like radioactive vomit. But there are other colours to choose from. If you like a bright colour, you can have a red or a blue. If you want something more subtle, then you can get a white, a black, a silver or a grey, which I think might be a little bit more palatable, let's say. All versions of the Astra get the new gloss black visor grille, which we've seen on some other Vauxhall models, and it suits it really well. If you go for the GS line trim or the Ultimate, the badges are also finished in black, which just help it all blend in and look very, very nice. Also, I love the way that the cameras are actually integrated into this front badge. You can hardly see them at all. They're not an eyesore on the front of the vehicle. You've also got some new light signatures as well. You've got some much slimmer LED lights, which are also mirrored in the rear lights. Let's talk about the pure panel displays. Now, because this is the ultimate car, it does get the largest two displays. If you go for the entry level design, they're just slightly smaller. Overall, they look very smart. I do really like the sweeping design, but already I feel like I'm getting just a little bit bored of it in a way. They've just put this also into the latest generation of Kia Nero, which I've driven. And I guess I'm just already getting a little bit bored of something that looks like it's very fancy and sweeping, but actually built in there is just two separate screens. But I'll give it its due. It's really nice. It looks smart. And I like the colorings as well. And you see that? As you swipe across, one, it turns on absolute 90s. What a radio station. Whoever's demo this is, is pretty cool. But also you get some really nice kind of flashing graphics as you go through, which I think is pretty cool. You've got shortcut buttons as well, thank goodness, which means you can change your climate control by tapping them up and down. I was actually really interested to see these piano keys because they do feel very Peugeot, but the fact that you can tap them upwards as well feel a little bit more Audi than they do Peugeot. It's just really smart. You get a lot of functions built in there, which is like your map if you go for the higher spec models, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless as well. It's just, there's no real complaints really. You've got the best of both worlds. You've got a nice clear screen. I like the colors, they're nice colors. It doesn't feel dull. And you've also got the physical buttons as well. What's there not to like? There's a pretty good variation of engine and gearbox combinations for the Vauxhall Astra. Now, if you go for the entry level design model, you can get a 1.2 litre turbocharged petrol engine, and that comes with a six speed manual gearbox, and you get around 110 brake horsepower. Now, if you go for any of the higher spec models, or if you want to upgrade that engine, you can go for the 1.2 litre petrol with the same engine, but with a power output of 130. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the pure tech badge engine that you get in the Peugeot. This is a great engine. It's a little bit noisy when you push it hard, but otherwise it has more than enough power most of the time. Now, if you go for this slightly more powerful engine, you get the option of either the six-speed manual 
or you can also have an eight speed automatic. This is a pretty good gearbox. Those extra gears mean it's quite smooth, but again, if you do push it hard, it does lag slightly. The manual, however, is a really nice box. It's nice and smooth and it goes through the gears easily. There's also a diesel option as well if you wanted to honour your fuel economy and that is a 1.5 litre diesel and your return fuel economy of around 45 to 50 miles per gallon. Now if you wanted some electric power, there isn't yet a fully electric version of the Vauxhall Astra. That's going to come next year, although I can imagine it's going to roll into 2024. But for now, you can get a plug-in hybrid. The plug-in hybrid gets a 1.6 litre petrol engine and then it pairs it together with an electric motor and a battery and these produce around 180 brake horsepower so far more powerful but they'll also run for 37 miles on fully electric so if you're doing short journeys and you want a bit more power this could be a great option for you. Over the years, the specification that the Vauxhall Astra came in could have been considered a little bit confusing. So this time around, Vauxhall wanted to make it really simple and it comes in just three trim levels. The entry level is called the design. It gets 16 inch alloy wheels, front and rear parking sensors, as well as keyless start. Then you get the GS line, which I think is the pick of the bunch. You get sportier interior and exterior styling. You get 17 inch alloy wheels and you also get things like heated seats and heated steering wheel. Not that you're going to need them on a day like today, but that really is nice to have in winter. You also get adaptive cruise control. Plus, it also gets those 17 inch alloy wheels, which I think are the sweet spot because if you go for the ultimate model which is the one that I have here it gets 18 inch wheels as standard now they look fantastic but the ride is just a little bit firmer the 17s are the perfect fit for the Astra or at least I think they are but the ultimate does get some extra nice specification you get a more powerful sound system you get a sunroof and you also get LED adaptive headlamps. Now these are fantastic. They use a series of LED lights, which light up different parts of the road depending on what you need to light. For example, when you're on a motorway, they won't dazzle the drivers coming towards you, but they will light up your part of the road. Vauxhall claimed that their engineers didn't want this car to just feel like the Peugeot 308 or the DS4. They wanted to stand it aside. And actually, I think they've done an all right job. It feels just a little bit smoother. It copes with bumps in the road a little bit better. And it also feels just a bit more refined. The cabin feels a little bit quieter. And I'm not sure if that's just a placebo because the car feels more comfortable that it feels a little bit quieter as well. But it does feel just slightly more refined than the Peugeot or the DS. When you get it onto the back roads, Yes, okay, it's not that engaging really, but it does go where you want it to go. The steering is pretty well weighted. There is, however, quite a lot of body roll. It does lean quite a lot, but actually what you find is it sticks to the road well. So though you have to get used to it leaning, once you gain confidence in the car, it's actually not bad to drive. The new generation of Astra has grown marginally on the outside by four millimetres. So if you do have one of the previous generation cars, it's not going to feel that much bigger to drive. However, the wheelbase has been extended by 13 millimetres. And that means as well as more rear interior space, you also get more boot space. 422 litres. That's really impressive. That's more than you'll get on the Volkswagen Golf and even the Toyota Corolla. It's pretty usable as well. The mid-spec and top-spec models get an adjustable boot floor and it's got a nice square opening so it's easy to lift things in and out. Whilst the boot is really competitive and beats some of its rivals, it does suffer with the same problem that the Peugeot 308 and the DS4 suffers with, and that's that space in the back isn't massive. I'm around 5'5". Five five. People keep saying, are you going to tell us your height every time? But I can guarantee you, the time I don't tell you my height, someone will ask. So I'm 5'5". Five five. I've got just enough headroom. Now this does have the sunroof and this part of the sunroof does come down a little bit lower. So have you not had the sunroof? I think I'd have a little bit more headspace. 
I've got a decent amount of knee room as well. These seats curve inwards, so it does give you a bit more space. But amenities are pretty good. I've got an armrest, which has two cup holders. You've got a little section you can pop your mobile phone in as well. And you've also got the load through ski hatch too, which makes it helpful for carrying longer items or if you ever go skiing. But I'm not sure how many people in the UK go skiing in their Vauxhall Astra. I could probably count them on one hand. The only problem as well with the Peugeot and the DS is this center console it comes quite far back and that means that anybody sitting in the middle seats will need to straddle that or have tiny weeny little knees to be able to get behind that center console which is a little bit of a shame thanks to the setup of this cabin the way that you've got the pure panels along the front and you've got this nice flat center console there's a great feeling of space and it feels like there's a decent amount of space between me and my passenger Storage is really good as well. Just like the 308 and the DS4, you get the full sized glove box. You've also got a little hidden bit of storage underneath the infotainment system to pop away your sunglasses. In front of that, a nice deep bit of storage which you can fit your full mobile phone in there, even if you've got one of the largest phones. And that's wireless charging on the higher spec models, as well as two USB C charge ports. You've also got a couple of cup holders which are hidden by a slidey bit of plastic. Plus, if you go for the manual car, you actually get three cup holders. How good is that? Again, there's another little bit of storage here and a split armrest. Now, something I've noticed about this armrest on this very, very hot day is it stays really, really cool inside there. In fact, I would go as far to say it was actually cooled, although don't quote me on that. But on a day like today, you could put cans of Coke in there and I'd be comfortable to say that they'd stay really nice and cool. The seats on this top spec ultimate car are really nice. They're very classy. You've got some velour down the center and then you've got some leather around the edge with the contrasting light gray stitching. They feel ultra smart and they are definitely the nicest seats that you can get. The GS line seats are nice. You've got a nice GS embossed into them but they are cloth so they don't feel as high quality as if you go for these ones plus on the ultimate they're also electrically adjusted and you do get electric lumbar support as well so it definitely gives you a good option if you want to step up to the ultimate to get these really comfy high quality seats now there's certainly something the Astra has over the Peugeot and that's the driver setup. I've got a really clear vision of the digital instrument cluster. I can see it in complete full because I've got a nice full sized wheel. And I've also got a good view of the head up display as well that you get on that ultimate spec model. It just feels a lot easier to see. One thing is for certain, this car is just from top to bottom far better than the previous generation. It drives better, it looks better, it handles better, it ticks a lot more boxes. The Vauxhall Astra always sold in pretty good numbers, but I fail to see why. However, this new generation makes sense, especially if you still want a manual gearbox. This car gives you that option. Often, when I drive cars like the Vauxhall Astra, it's a little bit of a concern of mine that it might just be a copy and paste job. But I'm really pleasantly surprised that the Vauxhall Astra seems to have its own personality aside from the Peugeot and also the DS. It feels quite edgy. It's got some really good tech in there, which stands it aside and isn't just a carry across from the other models. And it also gets that manual option as well. So it gets something which makes it completely different from those two other models. I do think it's a really good effort. And I think it still offers buyers everything they expect from an Astra, but now in a much smarter package. But what do you guys think of the Vauxhall Astra? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. If you want to get behind the wheel of this Vauxhall Astra, then make sure you get in contact with Underwoods in Colchester. I'll pop all their details in the description box. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'm off to get an ice cream.